thank you so much. Well, thank you. They can't all be wrong, can they? Anyway, good evening. Yes, the papers weren't lying. It is me. But don't worry, there'll be no gimmicks, no catchphrases. So welcome to Have I Got News For You. For you, have I got... Yes! <laughs> what a lovely audience. <laughs> Love it. And you're so much better than last week. <laughs> in the news this week, after 20 years in show business, the Chuckle Brothers announced their retirement. <laughs> in Inverness, after a blind man goes missing on a fishing trip, his loyal companion leads the search party. <laughs> And on the opening night of her first tour in three years, there are suspicions that Tina Turner may have dispensed with her personal trainer. <laughs> and the first couple on the show tonight... Uh, please, don't spoil it. Paul and... Uh, who this is, is uh, Bruce, this is Natasha Kaplinski, who is the uh, female anchor on the BBC Breakfast News. Isn't that right? Oh, that, yeah, that Natasha Kaplinski. Yes, yes. And uh, our next couple are Ian... Uh, oh, it's father and son. <laughs> <laughs> that would be appropriate with grandfather in the chair. <laughs> Um, I brought with me Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marcus Brigstock, who's a delightful young man, who is a comedian, stand-up and star of stage and screen. Marcus Brigstock, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, Marcus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we start with round one. Ian and Marcus, what's this all about? As the Prime Minister. Yes. <laughs> and that's his sidekick. They're very happy. <laughs> The euro. Some money, which we're not going to have. That's Horace there. No, it's me. Oh, is this? <laughs> and that's Alan Milburn. Alan Milburn. Okay. Yeah, he resigned. <laughs> but what a shame, you know, with no row, no scandal or anything. Yeah. Just our luck to get a, a no story. <laughs> well, I, I'll give it a few days, I think yeah. it'll turn. Oh, yeah, they'll, they'll dig something up, Ian. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it was the government's decision to wait and see over the euro. That's yes. what it was all about. Yeah. It was a historic announcement, Bruce. It was. Mm. The whole country was waiting to hear Gordon Brown say, well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Where did uh, they get the wait-and-see idea from? It was a failed Tory policy, so they borrowed it. <laughs> <laughs> what did the Express call the decision? The Express? Express. We're yeah. thinking of two syllables, probably, maximum, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> a brown fudge. Oh. <laughs> Charming, isn't it? Charming. <laughs> Anyone, any idea what this is? That's one of the equations in this enormous dossier that Brown produced. Shouldn't there be A minus A in the middle of that? <laughs> <laughs> What's the answer? What's the answer? Uh, the answer is always it takes three men four hours to run a bath. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone remember any of Gordon's catchphrases? It's nothing to do with me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hate you, Tony. Yeah. I love you, Tony. <laughs> there we are, I've got three of them here. The transition strategy modelling toolkit. I've got one of them. <laughs> Endologist <laughs> convergence. I think I have one of them. The five area bilateral Fabia model. I think I married mm. one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Blair and Brown gave a joint press conference on the Euro this week. And what were the telltale signs of the stresses? They started punching each other. <laughs> <laughs> During the speech, he sat there, Tony Blair sat there, and basically looked at every single word that uh, Gordon Brown was saying, just Did to check, really? if you watched him in the chamber, just you to check see, that he said everything that well, he in was in case he slipped anything in. in case, absolutely, like, like I'm going to be the next Prime Minister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Blair kept, uh, kept drinking water, ah, yes. journey, I think which was a sign that he was nervous. Yes, well, he did take 13 sips of water. Brown took three. Do you know why? He didn't have any water left. <laughs> 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 Yes, it's the decision not to scrap the pound, yet. Responding to Gordon Brown's speech, uh, Lib Dem spokesman Matthew Taylor said even chips are cheaper in France and Germany. At which point John Prescott darted out of the chamber muttering, <laughs> which way to Calais? <laughs> oh, the map on the back of the euro coin features only those countries in the EU, which means Norway is not included, and gives Scandinavia an unsettling shape. <laughs> Paul and Natasha, look at this. 
this, this is basically royal wish you were here, don't you think? Royal wish we were here. Oh, this is the, uh, the Queen visits Legoland. This is all an attempt to boost British tourism to say what a fabulous country you're living in. She's absolutely yeah. fascinated by what she's seen. <laughs> the but Charles had it, was wearing a kilt, wasn't he? And a That's right. dog sniffed up and oh. saw only what Camilla should see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Natasha! Not the crown, <laughs> surely. <laughs> There it is, there it is. There. Prince Philip pointed out a couple of mistakes, didn't he? That's right. It was the wrong colour, wasn't it? Wrong colour. What was the wrong colour? <laughs> the, uh, what, the Duke of Edinburgh was black, was yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> Whose outfit matched the Queen's? Uh, the yeah. Lego Queen was The there. little miniature. Yeah, little miniature Queen. Thanks. The same bored expression. How did they manage to catch that? <laughs> They also, they also saw their own busts in Lego. <laughs> <laughs> well, give us a clue. Which one's that meant to be? <laughs> it actually looks like Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> you must have been in Madame Two Swords. Have you been done wax work? Yes, I think they melted me down about ten years ago. <laughs> Just think, after this, you'll be recreated, won't you? After what? After Have I Got News For You. <laughs> this could be the finish of my career. <laughs> You, you, you said where they sent Pr Prince Edward. Princess, yeah. Prince Edward, he went to a caravan park in Wales. That's right. And uh, we can see him here to, uh, talking to Richard and Elsa Taylor. But he didn't go with uh, Sophie because she, um, you know, she's pregnant, so she needed a bit of a rest. She went somewhere that's else. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. She doesn't like camping as much as he does either. <laughs> <laughs> All the royals, they, they obviously had all these jobs on one day, and somehow Charles got to taste the whiskey. Mm. Yes. Do you imagine when they were parcelled out? You do the caravan, <laughs> you do Legoland, all right. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm heir to the throne. <laughs> I'm more worried that Legoland is the highlight of our uh, tourism industry, but there you go, mm. the Queen gets it. It's quite good, actually, that is bit. It? Yeah, that trooping of the colour bit in the front. It's pretty hot. Did it? Did it? <laughs> did it bring a tear to your eye when you went? It did. <laughs> I think they played um, British Grenadiers, too. Mm. <laughs> Was that how excited you were? Yeah. <laughs> when staff at Legoland heard that Prince Philip was coming to inspect their work, they started shifting bricks. <laughs> <laughs> at least I think that's what I've said. Now for the tabloid headline round, Ian Marcus, Stum Doctor. Yes, that's a clever pun on spin doctor, isn't it? <laughs> No, it isn't. Clever. <laughs> <laughs> it's Alistair Campbell refusing to say anything at all. He was asked to appear before a committee to explain yeah. why this dossier contained an old PhD thesis he downloaded from the internet um, <laughs> with a few words changed. Um, and he's decided not to explain himself, which is reasonable, yes. because he might have to tell the truth. Um, <laughs> and everyone's saying this is pretty disgraceful. He said uh, Saddam could deploy weapons of mass destruction within 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Assuming that America, Britain, or France could send the chemicals there <laughs> within about uh, 20 minutes. <laughs> good point, good point. Uh, will we now, that is a catchphrase. Good point, good, good point, point, good point, good point. <laughs> good I can see Paxman doing that one. <laughs> <laughs> will we ever find evidence relating to the weapons of mass? Did you yes, think? we, Do you we think will. will. Yeah, because the Americans have sent in their own inspection team. So, yes, definitely. <laughs> At some stage, we will. Well, we have found some evidence. We've been sent this leaflet on handling hazardous chemicals. And who's inspecting them? <laughs> We've got the job as a weapons inspector. And while we're on the subject of Iraq, it's definitely time for... <laughs> your Iraqi cards right. <laughs> now, these are the cards that the Americans... Please. <laughs> this is satire. <laughs> <laughs> now, these are the cards that the Americans made to show <laughs> all the Iraqi bad guys in the war. Now, Ian, you go first. Thank you, Bruce. It's the king of clubs. RCC vice chairman is at Ibram. Now then, it's a high card. <laughs> so, let's think about this. The audience will help you. Do you think it's high or lower? I'm not sure this program can go 
they're much lower. <laughs> oh, if you haven't seen the finish yet. <laughs> um, I'd say lower. Well, because you're great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now what have you got? You've got the Eight of Hearts, Minister of Defence Sultan Hashim Ahmed. Okay, yes, well, that's a mass murderer. <laughs> it's a middle card here. It's a middle card, so this is difficult. Okay. Did you, I never saw this program. No. <laughs> I know, that's why it's such fun for me. <laughs> you have to say higher or lower, but it's in, it's in the middle. So, it I is mean, in the middle, so it's a gam. Oh, higher, higher. So it's a gam would be higher, as would Rumsfeld. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are the audience? Higher. Higher. You think I'm going to say higher? Right, let's have a look at this. It's the Eight of Spades. Prime Minister Terry Kaziz, and you have a pair. You don't get anything for a pair. <laughs> Not <in> here. <laughs> so it goes over to Paul okay. and Natasha. You've got control of the board. Okay. <laughs> you have very important. Okay, you've got an eight of spades here. Do you think it's higher or lower? No. I think it's lower. I think it must be lower. Yeah, must be lower. Yes, Chief Scientist Hudo Sally. Oh, yeah, Chemical Sally. That was her, wasn't it? No. OK, so it's marvellous. Now, the last one, the last one, it's a fairly low card, mm, isn't it? Mm, mm. Oh, 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 OK, on the basis of that, I'll go lower. Lower. <laughs> You want to go lower? Yeah. What well, happens if we get that right? Then what? I've forgotten. Well, the you've end of the won. Oh, okay, we go to Barbados. What, both of you? <laughs> I'm about to toast them. We say lower. We say lower. lower. Okay, after a five, yeah. you think they're right? Oh, you're wrong! Oh. It's the star card, Saddam Hussein. So you've won. So well, you've gone holiday. You <laughs> Fourteen years for the show to be like this. <laughs> I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> yes, this is the ongoing row over Alistair Campbell's sexing up of the weapons of mass destruction dossier. <laughs> what in one breath? <laughs> Could you have a purple flash? <laughs> Could you go higher? No, I couldn't. <laughs> Tony Blair insists that weapons of mass destruction will eventually be found in Iraq. Well, it, it would be nice to see them, to see them. <laughs> <laughs> this could be a dream. This could be a dream. <laughs> and it could be in Ian's dream or it could be in mine. That you read that article, I think you should really be a newsreader in your next life. <laughs> you do it very smoothly. Are you being sarcastic? No, no, no. <laughs> Paul and Natasha, your spinning headline. Botax bonus. This is a story about uh, three celebrities, they are nameless, mm -hmm. apparently, mm -hmm. who've um, managed to persuade the taxman that they can net off their Botox injections against yes. tax. On what grounds? That they're a professional expense? Indeed yes. So. Mm. Yeah, because if you're an actor and you have to use, you know, your face and body to express things, it's very important to have parts of that paralysed using Botox. <laughs> <laughs> Would you consider Botox, Bruce? Well, not on my face, anyway. No. Who um, <laughs> started this? Oh, well, it must be in America, presumably, was it? <coughs> well, I don't know, because it doesn't give me the facts. No. <laughs> That's the fun of it. <laughs> it's an accountant. Hold it. Yeah, it says here. Now, what uh, won't this perk stretch to? Uh, colonic irrigation. Not now, thanks. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you if you're right. Really. <laughs> Another uh, unnamed star tried to claim regular colonic irrigation against tax and was refused. Mm. Bad luck, Dale. <laughs> They said to allow people to claim for colonic irrigation would open the floodgates. <laughs> Who's famously had Botox that you know of? Uh, Anne Robinson. Yes. She's had it. And she, she said it, I think, on this show. I think she? she did, you're right. And I don't know how much she spends on injecting her face with deadly poison, but whatever it is, it's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Natasha, what about Tony Benn? <laughs> 
Because I heard Tony Benn refused to do the interview for the BBC unless you interviewed him. Is that right? Well, I don't know if that's really true, but he's a completely charming man and he showed me around his house and I like him very much. Very nice. <laughs> do I hear the sound of wedding bells? <laughs> <laughs> that's the news that celebrities, if you're following the plot, um, <laughs> can claim tax relief for cosmetic surgery. Anne Robinson has famously been injected with Botox, deadly poisonous, and liable to induce vomiting, and Robinson presents the weakest link. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, at the end of all that, Ian and Marcus five, Paul and Natasha four. Oh. Very close. Very close. Very close. Now, round three is usually the odd one out round, but I've had a much better idea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we're going to play Conveyor Belt Connections. <laughs> Ian Marcus, you're first. Now, a number of different items will pass in front of you. <laughs> you must have seen you're... this, Ian. You must have seen this. Is this the end of the generation game? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> You'll have 30 seconds to remember as many of the items as you can and then tell me the connection between them. All right? I hope you're playing this at home. <laughs> right, let's see what's on the conveyor belt tonight. Well, Bruce, on the conveyor belt tonight are a trinket box, <laughs> a fan letter, highlighter pens, an electric toothbrush, a battery-operated stapler, a light bulb, a bottle of mineral water, the English flag, some Lynx deodorant, a mug, an Anglewise lamp, a stereo system, a book, Halle Berry, a pair of pink knickers. Right, now you've got 30 seconds to remember as many of those items as possible. 30 seconds starting from now. Halle Berry. Yes, good. Ha Halle, Halle Berry. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and the knickers. And the knickers. <laughs> yes, we'll see Halle Berry and the knickers. <laughs> <laughs> what about Halle Berry and no knickers? <laughs> oh. Uh, toothbrush. Cuddly toys are fair bet. Come on, Ian, join <laughs> in, join in. Fan letter. That's um, it, good. Bagel boys, lamp, um, electric light bulb, trinket box. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <made>. Very good. <laughs> Sorry, I've got to do it. Didn't you do well? <laughs> <laughs> You've got eight points. And what's the connection? This is the important thing. What is the connection with all those items? They are all uh, to be found or were to be found in Prince Harry's study at Eton. Now, yes, the connection is, as revealed in the weekend papers, they're all items found in Prince Harry's study. In the week that he leaves Eton, every paper in the land is united in its praise of Harry's ability as an all-round sportsman and artist. I'll make a note of that. Bit thick. <laughs> Paul and Natasha, let's have a look at your items. Bruce, on the conveyor belt this time round are a tin of dog food, the crown jewels, a Klingon, the Y chromosome, a velociraptor, a tea urn, some sewage, constables, the hay way, a cuddly toy. <laughs> Cockroach, Shep, Desert Orchid, Tinky Winky, Osama Bin Laden. All right, now you've got 30 seconds starting from now. Do you okay, remember any of those? Osama Bin Laden. Oh, Osama Bin Laden. Yeah, there was some sewage. There was a dog, the Teletubby. There yeah, was a cuddly picture. toy. There was a hay wagon thing. Wagon thing. Uh, um, there was a uh, Y. The yeah, Y yeah, chromosome. Yeah, yes. um, <clears throat> A little, um, like an action man figure. Action man figure, a tea's maid, uh, electric blanket. Uh, electric blanket. <laughs> toaster, was calendar, toaster? Calendar for 1973. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what else was there? Cockroach. Oh. You get the cockroach. Cockroach, yeah. You did that, yeah. Yeah. The Klingon, you got the Klingon. Klingon, Klingon, Klingon. 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 Oh, and how many points did they get? 13. Oh. <laughs> Oh, 
Yeah. No, but what is the connection? Mm. What is the, that's the important thing. I've got to give you a bit of a clue. Yeah, give us a clue. It's very clear. Well, having given them all the it's items bit... on the belt. Who <laughs> <laughs> cares? Oh, he cares. <laughs> <laughs> Ian's <It's> getting competitive. <laughs> What are you normally doing at this point in the show? Uh, usually picking out the odd one out. So yes, we, well... Um, is it, um, they've all appeared uh, in the odd one out competition, apart from uh, Action Man? Well, yes, the connection is, you're absolutely right, they are all objects that have been the odd one out over the years that you've done this show. Oh, there we are. <laughs> the Y chromosome was on the conveyor belt. The combination of chromosomes determines the gender of human individuals. To put it in biblical terms, XY is Adam, XX is Eve, and YYY, Delilah. <laughs> <laughs> now, Missing Words is the final round, featuring this week's guest publication, Dancing Times. I was a bit younger when that was taken. <laughs> OK, Bush lets what do the talking? Grown-ups. <laughs> Arse. <laughs> no, no, Chirac. No. <laughs> Keith Chegwin. Schroeder. <laughs> body language. Oh. Uh, body language. Yeah, yes. body language. Uh, Next, love affair with computers could create what? The pitter patter of tiny laptops. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a sticky keyboard? The answer is world without romance. Oh. Oh. Next, tap dance on the what in Switzerland? Is it cheap? <laughs> tap dance on the cheap? No, no, not is cheap. Is it piss? No. Like what? Tap dance on the piss in Switzerland. Get drunk and tap dance in Switzerland. No. It's a holiday. No, no. On the increase? On the, well done. Oh, well, well, well done. done. Yes, tap dance on the increase in Switzerland. Yes. It is on the increase. Well, it must be temptation when the hills are alive with the sound of music. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was Austria. Well, you know your musicals, don't you? <laughs> Lovely school Ian appeared in an amateur version of the sound of music. That's right, mm -hmm. isn't it? I was Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> it's a walk on part, but a necessary role. <laughs> and finally, the riffle is basically a what? With a what? It's a trifle with a team with... in it. <laughs> <laughs> answer is shuffle with a scuff between the brush and the pull. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, in tap dance, you have yeah. a lot of things like ball changes, flat, pull change, flat, yeah. pull change. It, it, they're all turns, mm. all turns. Mm. OK, which I'm sure they couldn't care less about. <laughs> Especially when you demonstrate it under the desk. Right? <laughs> we can testify oh, that your shuffle pull change was very good. A new first for television, Invisible Tap Dancing. <laughs> could go on the radio with that. The scores are as follows. Ian and Marcus have 16. Paul and Natasha have 21. <laughs> congratulations to Paul and congratulations to Ian, who has won the series. And as our series winner, Ian, we're going to offer you the chance to gamble. <laughs> to gamble all your winnings against our fabulous mystery prize. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. Well, if you win, yeah, can I. <laughs> and if you win, you get to keep both the series and the prize. Well, I must warn you. <laughs> if you lose, you lose the prize and Paul takes the series. OK? You just have to answer one simple question. Audience, what do you think you should do? Marcus. Yes, Ian. Yeah. All right. Well done, Ian. Very brave. And now, no help from our audience at this point in the show. Here's your question, Ian. It's about football. <laughs> Who was the England captain for the match against Slovakia this week? Michael Owen. Well done! Well done indeed. Come on. 
<laughs> Let's see what you've won. Well, Ian, you're going to be whisked away on a luxury jet to Brussels, the very heart of the European Union, to witness at first hand the workings of this exciting social, economic and cultural community. As the personal guest of disgraced French President Giscard d'Estaing. And as if that wasn't enough, we're throwing in 100 euros spending money. Well done. Well, lovely. Lovely. And I leave you with news that... At his club in London, Peter Stringfellow proudly shows off his latest girlfriend. <laughs> and in Westminster, there are accusations of cheating after Tony Blair goes 100 nil up at Stone Paper Scissors. <laughs> Good night.